Greetings, dear viewer. If you've played a modern game recently, you're probably aware that they're certainly not lacking much in the eye candy department. However, as you're probably also aware, it wasn't always so. Older games had to run at reduced resolutions and make heavy use of dithering to work within the hardware constraints of the era. This gave them a lo-fi, blockier look that has become something of a retro aesthetic in its own right, as evidenced by things such as the 32-bit game jam. In this video, I'm going to show you how that look can be reproduced using the Blender Compositor. Get ready, because tonight we're going to party like it's 1995. Okay, I've got an empty blend file here, open to the compositor view. How do we proceed? The first thing you'll want to do is have either your render layers or another image source at the ready. I'm using a high def rip of Big Buck Bunny here, but any RGBA image source will do nicely. Next, in an image editor, we're going to create an image large enough to encase the render. I've used a 2048 by 2048 one in this example. In this image, we'll need to create a checkerboard pattern, or more specifically, we need an alternating black and white pixel pattern. Depending on what image editor you're using, there are different ways of creating this. Here's how I did it in GIMP 2.10. First, make sure the image is in true color or gray mode with 8 bits of precision. Next, fill the image with 50% gray. And finally, change the image to index color mode, then choose one bit color option, and then in dithering, choose positioned. Now that we've created the checkerboard, let's export it where it'll be easier to find later. Now, back in Blender, we'll take our image source, route it into a scale node, and then set the scaling type to relative, and then finally set the X and Y to the same values. I'm using a value node to control them here. We'll also scale the image again by the reciprocal to make sure the image stays the same size on output. Now, route the scaled image into a pixelate node. If you route the result of all this to our viewer node and enable backdrop, you'll see that it already has a nice low resolution look. But the colors are still a little bit too nice to be from a mid 90s console. Let's fix that with a clever bit of pixel arithmetic. Next, we'll take our pixelated result and route that into a separate RGBA node. Now, we'll take the red channel and route it into the top value of a math node, set that math node to multiply, and finally, for the bottom value, which controls how many levels of color intensity we display, we'll pick a sensible value, say 16. I'm using a value node to control it. At this stage, you may also want to group some of these nodes to make them easier to work with. To this, we'll add a couple more math nodes and set them to floor and subtract, respectively. At this point, we'll also duplicate the node group we just made and connect it across all three color channels, and that should give us a better representation of what the final image should look like. With that being done, let's hop back into the red channel node group. We route the result of the multiply into the floor, and then out of the floor into the bottom value of the subtract. To the top input, we'll route the unchanged red value. This difference that we've just computed is the amount of deviation from what would have been the true color, or in the parlance of software development, the error term. We will check whether this error term is at least one half by using another math node set to greater than 
and if it is, we'll multiply it by the pixel values coming out of the checkerboard image, then add the result onto the output of the floor. The end result is that, if we have a red intensity value that falls between two of the values we can actually represent, the output will alternate between having one added to it and not. Checkerboard dithering, just like Grandma PlayStation used to make. And that's pretty much it. I hope this inspires someone to make something cool, and I'm really excited to see what you guys, gals, and NB pals make with this. The next video will be about a workflow for 2D animation. Greetings to viewer Kelly who requested it. Thanks for watching and cheers!